Hello everyone, welcome to this quick video. In this one, I wanted to give you a working Terraform code that you can use to quickly deploy a virtual machine in Azure. And I'm just gonna explain some of the steps how you do that. Now I already have some examples how to authenticate to Azure, so I'm gonna skip that part. But if you really think about creating a virtual machine in Azure, you have to go through several steps, right? You need a resource group, you need a virtual network, and the virtual network needs to be divided into one or more sub-network. And you need to create a network interface card in one of these subnets. Then you are ready to create a virtual machine. Now, even when you create the virtual machine, you, you'll be attaching disks and a whole bunch of different things. You can also create those resources as a separate step as well. But at least these four steps needs to be done before you can get to the virtual machine. So if you look at this code, which I'm going to give it to you in my GitHub account. So I have a general Terraform blank with nothing in here. And I have this provider block. And what I have done, I have created a, another file provider.tf and moved this information back to this file. And I'm not keeping this as part of the Git repository because you have your client ID and client secret that are sensitive. Okay, that Terraform, when I'm going to run this file, the Terraform actually going to look into this file read all of that and you do this by configuring this command right so you can create uh, i'm using what i'm using is a service principle and you would be running az ad sp create for our back and you create the service principle whatever name you want then the role this contributor okay and it will give you an output where you have all this uh, information Okay, so if you look at the code, <clears throat> I have the resource group that I'm creating. I usually, this is just a reference, but what I do a lot of times, I make the name and the reference name uh, the same just to make things simple. So I created the next one is a virtual network. And this is a manually said, okay, go ahead and add 10 0 network as my VNet virtual network address space. Now I created one subnet and i divided this network uh took a small chunk of slash 24 and then i created a network interface okay and i said okay dynamically allocate a private ip i did not assign any public ip now the next one is uh, you can run this resource as your uh, rm windows virtual machine now here is your admin password uh, and ad admin username now to make things more secure, you can create a key vault and you can call the key vault to give you a username and password. But for the tests environment that I have right now, I'm just using uh, the clear test version of my admin password and the username here. And uh, I have the OS disk block, which is also required. You have a caching, read, write, and storage account type is a standard LRS is what I'm using. And this is the block, this is the image that I'm going to use for my deployment. It's going to use the Microsoft Windows Server, uh, offer is Windows Server SKU 2019 data center and version. I typically use the latest, okay? Now the question you may ask, hey, where do you get this information? So I put you, put a quick AC command right there. So let me try to go to my, uh, to my Azure portal, see if I can log in and I'll show you how to run the command to get some of that information. Uh, it's just uh, making me re-login. Re so let me just see if I was completely out here. Yeah, most probably I was out. So let me just read. All right, I'm logged back to my Azure portal and I am in that cloud shell. Okay, you can go by clicking over here. And let me run this command real quick. And this is the AZVM image list. And you're outputting that as a table. So if you run this command, it usually gives you a general list of different offers that you have, okay? And look at some of the Windows Server. So here is the publisher is Microsoft Windows Server. And here are the different SKUs that you can use. And usually you have the latest that are always available. Okay, there's the version. So that's what I'm using. So if you, I wanted to change that to 2008 R2 SP1, I would be using this for the SKU in my code. Okay, so let me go back to the code again. So here I would change all of that, okay? So now with that, uh, let's see where we are. 
so we need to be you need to be on that folder 01 here for my UPM and I'm not on that folder so I might do a ls real quick and then go to CD uh, then do ls now here uh, I'm assuming that you have the Terraform installed and you have to start with the init so it's Terraform init so that will initialize our Terraform so Terraform what it's looking for is looking for Okay, what who is the resource provider who is the provider you're using and it's going to download that provider for you now as i said since i'm using the provider as you are am it's downloaded that it said hey everything is good now what i'll do um now we are ready now a couple other things that i run typically uh, i always run terraform validate that actually validates the code that i have and uh, it's not always 100 percent correct but 90% of the time, if I have any syntax error, it will catch it. So I usually use that. Third command that I run is Terraform FMT. So that is the format. So that will format. If I have any formatting issue, it will nicely format my code. With that, I'm ready to run a plan. So plan is as close to as a real deployment. Okay. And it's going to tell you what's going to happen, what will be deployed, things like that. And if I'm if I'm happy uh, with the plan, you can actually save the plan in an output file if you like. Uh, you don't need to, uh, but it's uh, you can with the out option. Okay. So right now uh, I'm good. So this is the output of the plan. So it's saying that all these things that you're saying that are plus. So those are all the resources that are going to be created. Okay, because we have a whole bunch of things, right? We have a whole bunch of things that we are creating so i'm pretty happy with this so the last thing is to do the apply so once i'm running the apply it is going to go it is actually running the plan again because we have not saved the plan from the previous command to a file and i'll show you how to do that so this time what happened it just ran the rerun the plan again and it's asking hey do you really want to perform these options and again i'm going to say yes go ahead buddy do that and what will happen here it should deploy all these different resources for me in azure and i should see a deployment very soon now what i the last comment that i wanted to show you after this one is done is the terraform destroy so by any means if i forget to show you that one remember the command it's terraform destroy and in a test environment you would run you would want to run that so you are not uh, accumulating or incurring any cost okay so right now if you look at this uh, logs that we have seen here so it started with the resource group then it went to the virtual network then it's coming down to the sub network now it's coming down to the network interface and then it started the VM so Terraform a lot of time it knows the interdependencies between these different resources that you're creating it knows which one to create first and which one to create next because it understand the dependency okay you can write your code in a way that you are defining your dependency as well if you like but uh, for the most part Terraform will know the dependency between the different resources and it's going to tell you hey vm is now deploying it's, it's taking about 50 seconds at the moment and once the vm is deployed and successful uh, we'll go and take a quick look at the virtual machine, make sure it's working, and then I'll give the link and I'll show you. I'll just add the code to the GitHub and give you the link. And we'll destroy the machine. And then this one is a pretty simple deployment. Uh, in the next one, what I'll do, I'll probably go ahead and try to work on adding some uh, encryption with this deployment and make this code a little bit more complex, but not too complex. Uh, Another thing to notice over here, if you see, it's after we ran the terraform, terraform init command, it created this dot terraform file folder. Uh, and then when we are running this terraform apply, uh, it's creating the terraform.tf state. Okay. And it's also actually creates a terraform.tf state backup file as well. But you don't need uh, those files. Uh, you should not be uh, version control. You should not version control those files should only version control this tf files and nothing else uh what else so it's about 
two minutes it's still trying to create the virtual machine and it's all done so before we do anything i want to show you one command uh, that is the terraform and you can say state and then list that's a very nice command if you run this one it also tells you okay what are the resources actually that it knows the state of okay so it knows the state of the network interface and that is the reference it knows the state of azure resource group and that's the name of it or reference of it this is the subnet which is the virtual network and this is the virtual machine okay so before we do anything um, let's come back over here now the green is the things that uh, are in the git uh, let's do uh, git status here where am I I'm actually gonna go back up one folder and do uh, git status okay so I only need this file and I do not need to track these files at all so I should be good so git um, M uh, git commit and um, edit file for Windows VM deployment in Azure using data form. Okay, uh, only thing you need to do update the provider block provider block okay I'll say un uncomment and update okay uncomment and update the provider block so this is the one I'm talking about so as soon as you fix this you're golden okay so let's uh, hit enter and do a git push and let's quickly verify that if I have the file so there we go so here you have some information if you don't know how to create this service principle i have given you this information here as well and this is the vm terraform file that i just created very basic one but you can use this one to deploy your own virtual machine to azure okay so let's see what to do next all right with that let me show you the last thing uh here let me uh, oh, oh two things actually uh, I want to go to the portal and validate that we have that virtual machine available to us. So I think we used the uh, example RG and let's see if we have the virtual machine deployed. There is no virtual machine. Let's just refresh. See if anything shows up. And while this is going on, still nothing. So uh, let me go back and see the code real quick. What is the name? Is VMRG and oh that's the wrong uh, resource group <laughs> so we gotta find the right resource group is VMRG is the resource group so in here I'm expecting to see the virtual machine so let's validate that so look at that so all of that uh, got created in VM1 is VNet uh, and this is a uh, network interface so if you go to the is VNet I'm expecting there is only one subnet uh, that should be slash 24 10.0.0.24 and address space should be same with 16 okay um, let's go back to the virtual machine uh, virtual machine should be having an IP address okay the virtual machine is having some problems of whatever reason um, so let's look at the disk Okay, this looks uh, good okay and uh, what else do I need to do okay and here's the virtual machine okay so again uh, we did not provide any public IP address so it's not there Okay, public IP is not there, but the private IP is dynamically generated, and it's uh, 10.0.0.4, and uh, that's about it.
so this is 2019 data center and if you look at this plan operating system all that matches uh, with the code that we have deployed okay so at this time what you can do uh, you can delete this whole deployment that is the beauty of infrastructure as a code and all you need to do is run terraform destroy and there we go oh i'm in the wrong folder sorry you have to go back to the right folder so zero one so over here we're gonna run terraform destroy it's gonna ask you actually hey do you really want to do that and you're gonna say yeah why not let's do it and then it's gonna get rid of it okay so that's all i wanted to do in this video in a later uh, video i'll show you how to create this file from scratch okay although it's like almost 75 lines of code it shouldn't take more than like three minutes to do this because your ide support is awesome okay and uh, i think i have done videos how you you set up your ide now i use both code and the intellij idea i like both of them and these days i actually liking the idea a little bit more than code to be honest um, but i don't care which one you're using uh, both are very very good and should help you write all this code and uh, help you out developing your infrastructure as a code so there we go have some fun and if you need something please leave a comment um, i'll i'll be doing more videos on terraform this is something fascinating that i'm also learning as i'm teaching you guys as well so have fun and please leave a comment give me give me a thumbs up if you like the video thank you have a great day